You may have heard that I am currently on vacation, so I'm recording this one week before the video comes out. My name is Globku and today we're gonna break down some details on the Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet multiplayer. Because recently not only did we get an official press release explaining what those multiplayer modes are all about, but we also got some gameplay footage from a Bandai Namco livestream. I couldn't find the original livestream, so we're gonna credit the clips that we use to other channels that have replicated it and re-uploaded it on uh, their YouTube channels. But know that despite us giving credit to those guys, this is official footage from Bandai Namco. So yeah, again, I apologize if this is a little bit out of date, but I have recorded this last Wednesday. So if any news came out in the meantime, this is gonna be outdated. If not, well then, I guess I'm pretty awesome and clairvoyant, apparently. Regardless of how outdated this information is, these are details that will be in the final game of Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. This is what you can expect from the multiplayer. Okay, so how many modes can we expect from Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet? Two. On one hand, you'll have the online co-op, and on the other hand, you'll have the online battles. But before you go to either one of them, there's this online lobby where you can meet up with the other custom avatars from around the world, set up parties, and decide what you're going to do. While in this lobby, you can communicate with preset messages, and also just emoji, you can have all the characters dancing around if you want to. But that's just good old lobby fun, let's get into the real stuff, the game modes. Now we can talk about online co-op or online battles first, uh, what do you want? Yeah, I still can't hear you guys, that's a problem. I'm gonna say uh, online co-op, because that's maybe easier to understand. Now, back at Gamescom, we had an interview with the game's producer. And according to the game's producer, the co-op would consist of basically a group of players going into a dungeon and beating it. And also, if someone doesn't like to, to fight against other players, there's also PvE modus. It's a co-op modus where you fight against monsters. So you can choose your own st um, style, what kind of game you want to play. Now, now what's cool is that we already have a couple of boss fights that have been shown during this live stream. And the challenge is definitely a lot tougher than your typical boss, at least from my experience. From the time that I put into the game, there was a boss in the open world and it wasn't nearly as tough as this. This is gonna require teamwork, there are some attacks that you just need to get out of the way, others that are just gonna hit you and you need the support of your teammates to heal you up and maybe even revive you. Now despite this being a team of four players, it almost feels like there are eight players on the field, and that's because your AI partner, Arfa Shiz, will be a part of that team. And since your Arfa Shiz is in the game, that means all the other Arfa Shiz are also in the game. Yes, there are indeed eight characters in that party, even though only four of them are players. And you can do some very useful stuff with Arfa Shiz. As we saw in one of our previous videos, you can customize her behavior, giving her different priorities on what to do, for instance, reviving allies. And reviving allies on its own, like even if we don't look at other options, that's already a huge benefit. If you have four characters dedicated to reviving allies, that means all four players don't ever need to worry about reviving. They can just focus on staying alive and damaging the boss for as long as possible because the AI will take care of the rest. Now why would you ever go online? Is there any benefit to it besides, you know, playing with friends? But you do get some rare items, just like any MMORPG out there. You will get some rare items that you probably couldn't get anywhere else, or at least would be very hard to obtain in a single player sort of situation. Now these rare items don't seem to be straight up just armor or weapons, instead they seem to be materials that you take into these game stores to then craft or improve your weapons. For instance, you can go to Elizabeth's store and strengthen a weapon there, or just go straight to Asuna's custom store and get some new threads over there. If you want to learn more about the complicated systems behind all of these stores, check out this video right here, we already broke it down a couple weeks ago. But basically, yeah, you get crafting items, you go to the store and you exchange those for better loot. That's not all there is to it, for those who really want to dig into this cooperative mode and get competitive with it, there will be time attack quests. Basically, there will be a timer for online co-op for you to beat a boss, and then there is a rankings leaderboard and your team, you know, will be placed on it somewhere. So if you want to take this a bit more seriously than most players, you can totally do that too. Now, it's not clear whether or not these dungeons will just be a boss fight. I was under the impression that it would be a bit more elaborate, some trash mobs first, maybe some environmental hazards, and then at the end of it all, there would be a boss fight. The two examples that we've gotten so far are only boss fights, so I'm not very clear if the more traditional types of dungeons will be in the game, but we can safely expect more than these two bosses. And that's the online co-op, so let's jump 
into the online PvP, which is not straight up just a team deathmatch game. So the online battles are 4v4. And no, you don't take your Arfishes into this mode. That would be a little bit too much. But not only will you have to deal with the enemy team with four enemy players, you'll also have to deal with an NPC. An NPC that is not your friend, it is actually a boss level enemy that will try to kill both teams. So it's almost like a three-way fight. And the way you actually win the game is not by killing the enemy team, is by dealing damage to the boss. At the top of the screen you'll see a percentage for each team. Team Alpha and Team Bravo both are dealing damage to the boss, and the more damage they deal, the bigger the number gets. Once it gets to 100%, that team wins the match. So you don't even need to kill the other team if you have a bigger damage output. But that's what makes this game mode interesting, is the fact that you'll be able to kill the enemy team to prevent them from dealing more damage than your team. And while their players are down, they're not dealing damage, they're waiting for a respawn, or maybe there's a second player that goes and revives him, but that gives that second player some downtime as well, and that gives your team the advantage to push forward in the match. Now this boss level character, it's not just a boss level character in terms of health, it also has some pretty crazy attacks. Like these balls all bouncing up and down, they kill you with one hit, or at least that's what it looks like. These are tough enemies, and while the balls seem easy to dodge, you won't always be paying attention to the boss, you'll be paying attention to enemy players as well. I really like the direction they're going with this, uh, the fact that this game is an RPG, and it even has that auto-aiming system. You don't need to manually aim all the time. The game gives you this box, and as long as the player is within it, you will shoot automatically and hit them. You won't get the same damage as a manual aim, but it helps you out a lot in situations where you have to use a lot of mobility. But since there are all these RPG systems, I do think this is better than just straight up a team deathmatch game mode. Because it wouldn't be a competitive shooter at that point, it would just be who can take better advantage of this auto-aiming system. And also with a map like this, it would just be who is the best one with a sniper. So this forces a different mentality, a different playstyle, and I'm very much into this idea. But that's just me, let me know what you think in those comments down below. Would you rather have a more traditional first or third person shooter game mode? A team deathmatch, a capture the flag, a control point sort of situation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you missed last week's Sword Art Online video, we went into into some character creation details. You can watch that video right here. If you're in the mood for something else, there's also the video at the bottom. But as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku, and I'll see you guys next time. Boy.